that the conspiracies, the gang of that have in the past frustrated you. Every foe that is a pursuer that stubbornly wants to pursue after you to prevent you from entering God's promised inheritance that they be buried by this anointing in the name of Jesus. What stands like a wall of Jericho, I command them to crumble before you. So I decree that even the opportunities you missed, may God restore them back to you. Father Lord, once again we submit ourselves in totality to the help that comes from you. You are our Ebenezer. You are a present help in trouble. So help me, O oh God, to minister what is in your heart and let it be a blessing to your people as it brings profit and increase to everyone. And thank you for confirming your words with miracle signs and wonders. In Jesus' name we have prayed. So give me a more lively amen. amen. Last week we said that pain is everywhere. It's prevalent everywhere. Whether it's in the home, in your workplace, or even in the church, it's everywhere. Because the whole world lies under the grip of the wicked one. It lies under the control of the devil who is here to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The wall is a place of pain. A day is going to come, the new Jerusalem, where there will be no more pains, no more tears, no more sorrow. But that day has not come. That place has not come yet. While you are in this world, Jesus said, you will have tribulations. But don't worry about it. Be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. So it's a world of pains. Uh, you can pray them away. What you can do is convert those attacks of the enemy, those pains, and bring out God's glory and its promotion out of them. We also say that pain on its own is not an enemy. Pain is not an enemy. Pain simply reveals that there is an enemy. Pain on its own is not an enemy. Pain reveals to you that there is an enemy that is out there to sponsor tears and sponsor pains. So it enables you to be more watchful, more vigilant, and to know who to address if you want to experience advancement. So pain is a proof that there is someone out there that wants to hurt you, wants to harm you, wants to kill, wants to steal and to destroy. But the pain comes so that you know what to do to avoid the entrapment of the enemy. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because there is an adversary, an adversary that goes about seeking for whom to devour. And what you do is to resist him steadfast in your faith. So pain can be overcome Pain can be uh, turned into promotion. Pain can actually fulfill a good purpose in our lives. Nobody comes to Christian maturity without passing through this process, a process of pain. If you're going to mortify the flesh, it will cost you some pains. If you're going to kill the flesh, it will cost you some pains. To overcome offenses and come to maturity, you will need to overcome pains. So nobody matures as a Christian except you pass through this process that God has put in place for our maturity, for our testings. And it's a process of passing through pains. So pains will bath maturity in your Christian work. In fact, 
there are some ministries that you don't qualify to offer unless you've passed through the process of pains. The Bible says with the same comfort you've been comforted, you use that same comfort to comfort others also. So you pass through some issues. That qualifies you to be able to look at other people, empathize with them, and comfort them. People who have not experienced genuine pains, frankly speaking, don't have a ministry that they can, they can speak from experience to offer help to those who are in need. Have you had somebody come and say to you before, I know what you're passing through, just take heart. But they don't know what you're passing through because they've not passed through the same thing. But there are certain people that can tell you, I have passed through these, I've come out on hearts, and I know the same God that helped me will help you also. And such people have paid the price to be listened to. You qualify to offer certain ministry when you pass through the process of pain. Now, for instance, I can tell younger ministers in Zaria that this, this, this city can become a land of milk and honey where your ministry can prosper. When we started, we were told it's a graveyard for ministries so that nobody can raise a big ministry from this city. That was what we were told. That was what a lot of people believed. But then God planted us here it took some pains, it took some trials, it took some testings, it took some bashings from the enemy. Several times, it almost cost us our lives. But I can stand to say some things today backed up with the experience I've passed through to encourage younger ones. So lift up here and say, my pains will become my ministry. I didn't hear will say, my pains will become my ministry. Please say it one more time. My pains will become my ministry. Amen. Psalm 84. Psalm 84, verse 1. This is a subject I've touched on before, but it's relevant for this discussion. Psalm 84, verse 1. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. And here is the part we are going to focus on from verse 4. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Blessed is a man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Verse 6, let's go together. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. In verse 7 reads, they go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. The valley of Baca. The valley of Baca. Now look up and listen to me. Now that scripture shows us what we can do to arrest our pains, to turn our pains around, and turn our pains into profit. The Bible talks of the valley of Baca. You know what that means. The valley of Baca is a valley of weeping. It's a valley of crying. It's the valley, the dry valley of weeping. The Bible describes people that pass through that valley and they don't live it the same. They pass through a place of weeping and they turn it around into a place of springs of blessings. What was their secret? What did they do? That they would pass through a place of weeping but turn it around into a place of blessing. Now, if you've gone to Israel before, the Valley of Baca is actually a physical location. It's a dry place where a lot of trees are planted there 
And the kind of trees that grow there are trees that look as if they are crying because they produce something like gum that looks like tears coming down. Some of you have seen those kind of trees before. It's like the trees are crying. Now, the Valley of Baca has a lot of these trees. And as you are passing to Jerusalem on pilgrimage, you would have to pass through that valley where you have these trees that look as if they are crying. Now, even though there is a physical valley where you have these trees that look as if they are weeping, it's also symbolic. It's symbolic for those that are going to Jerusalem on a pilgrimage. It was a long journey. And they had to pass through this place that was so dry, a place that looks as if the trees there were crying before they eventually arrive at Jerusalem on pilgrimage. So is a type and a shadow of the journey of life. Please look, at, look over and listen to me. It's a type and a shadow of the journey of life that to get to your place of Christian maturity, your place where the best can come out of you. Now, I don't know about you, but many times we have to pass through this valley of Baca, the valley of pains, the valley of testings, before we eventually get to our ultimate height, that place called New Jerusalem. I'm not talking of heaven now, but where we come to a place of Christian maturity. But I'm glad to tell you that these people that pass through the valley of Baca, the Bible says they grow from strength to strength until they eventually appear in Zion. What was their secret? Because I want to pass through the experiences that have brought others down. I want it those experiences to strengthen me, to build me up, and not reduce my testimony, but actually become the ladder I will climb to I get to my place of ultimate height. So what was their secret? Two things that they had which I'm going to share with you. You see it in verse 5, Psalm 84 verse 5. Here is what they had. Psalm 84 verse 5, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Please read that verse with me. Psalm 84 verse 5, 1, 2, let's go. All right, two things in verse 5. That was the secret behind their passing through the valley of weeping. And they grew from strength to strength. And they turned the valley of Baca to a spring of blessing. The Bible says their strength is in the Lord. And then number two, they had set their heart on a pilgrimage to Zion. I'll take that last point first. How come they pass through the valley of Baca and they turn it around into a spring of blessing and they were going from strength to strength until they eventually appeared in Zion? What was their secret? Number one is what? That they set their heart on pilgrimage to Zion. They set their heart on a pilgrimage to Zion. I pray God to give us understanding. Their hearts were set that they were going on pilgrimage to Zion and they would not allow the valley of Baca to spoil their day or spoil their joy until they got to their destination. So the destination they set for themselves was one reason why they could pass through the valley of pain and not become discouraged and not give up and not give in and not allow temporary pains to stop them from the destination they had set. I'll come again. How do I overcome the valley of Baca? The Bible says these people set their heart on a pilgrimage. 
that I'm going somewhere. There may be potholes on the way, but there is a destination that is ahead of me. It's worth striving for. It's worth fighting for. It's worth struggling for. It's worth waiting for. And I am not ab about to abandon the journey because for now I am passing through a place called the place of weeping. My destination is beckoning on me and it's worth fighting for. These people had set their hearts. Everybody say, set your heart. I think he will say, set your heart. In other words, your mind is made up that in the name of Jesus, I refuse to allow what is happening now to be the reason why this journey must stop. Which means those who permit their present circumstances that may not be favorable to distract them from their ultimate goal, they start this journey but they don't end it well. There is no way you are going to that is good that Satan will not be interested. If God set that destiny for you, if he set that destination for you, now, would you be surprised if the devil is interested also? Because if it is good, if it is glorious, just as it attracts the help of heaven, it also attracts what? The attack of hell. So if you are passing through a season of baka, a season of pain, it is the destination you see that inspires you to continue this journey. They had set their hearts on pilgrimage. Please lift up your hand. This journey, this journey. is taking me somewhere. Did I hear will say this journey? It's taking me somewhere. Now, where is it taking you to? It's taking you to your dreamland, isn't it? Taking you to your glorious heights in Christ Jesus. Taking you to your place of happiness. It's God that set the journey. You are not going to seek for one, one, one Ifa or one, one, um, uh, what do you call some of these idols here? Babalao or whatever. That's not what you are. You've set your heart on pilgrimage to become what heaven wants you to be. So if you are passing through a season of discouragement, what inspires you to continue is what is the end you are seeing. So raise your hand and say, there is a great destination for me. Please say, Lord, say, there is a glorious end for me. Now the beginning may be tough, it may be rough, but it's part of the process passing through the valley of Baca, not getting stuck there, not building your tent there, not packing your life there, passing through the valley of Baca, they set their hearts on a pilgrimage to where? To Zion. Zion there represents God's presence. It represents where the house of the Lord, house of the Lord was at that time. So these people that pass through the valley of Baca, were able to endure the pains because their minds were made up that this journey must not end until I get to my destination. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus, that glorious end God has shown you, you would certainly get there. Yeah. You see, you know, the one who said, I know the plans I have for you, they are what? Plans of good and not of evil. But part of the process in making the plans come to pass is pains. At times, the pains of discipline. Because I tell you something, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how great or big your dreams are, without inflicting on yourself the pains of discipline, you are not likely to make it. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, he said what? I pummel my body, isn't it? I put it under. I subject it to suffering because I don't want to be a great preacher preaching to others and be set aside and disqualified. So anointing alone on the life of Paul was not enough to help him last the journey. There was a need for personal discipline. And I've said many times that how I know that your dream, your vision is in control of your life is when your flesh complains. If your flesh has not complained, that this man, you are a tyrant, you are very wicked. 
your dream, your vision is not in control. So part of the pains we pass through is the pains of personal discipline. And many times, the bigger the goal you have, the more willing you are to pay the price. Is that not so? Please wave your hands if you're here. I mean, if your ambition is to become the president of the nation, the price you pay is obviously different from somebody who is aspiring to be a, 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 a local government chairman or a counselor, a ward counselor. The price is not the same. So at times I can tell how endearing, how great your vision, your dream is just looking at the willingness to pay the price. A man who finds a field of great price is willing to go and sell everything to go purchase it. So raise my say, on the wings of my pains, I will be promoted. I will be lifted. I will get to my wealthy place. So please, I pray for you again. Your pains will not be wasted in Jesus' name. When you pass through the valley of Baca, what do you do? There is a destination ahead. You are just on a pilgrimage. It's part of the journey. It's not the end. So whether it's in your home, home starts and you have a lot of struggle in the beginning until it gets to a point some of these young people believe they made a mistake. Every happy home you see that has been happy for years passed through its own process. I mean, if you've never been tempted by the devil to convince you that the woman you marry may not be the right person, that it could have been Sister Angela that looked more, 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 more pretty, more intelligent, the devil would slam such at everybody. But when you listen to people that have, God has helped them the past 30, 40 years, and they are still smiling, still thanking God that God gave them that made. It's not that they didn't pass through seasons of pains, brothers and sisters. There is a valley of Baca on your road to your high places. And I tell you something, not too many people will exempt that valley of Baca. But if you are passing through it right now, remind you, there is a glorious end ahead of me. I'm going to have a best marriage on earth in the name of Jesus. I'm going to have a happy home. I'm going to have a glorious marriage. But in the meanwhile, I am prepared to absorb the valley of Baca because it's part of what will prepare me for the grape in my promised land. To taste the grapes in my promised land. So lift up your hand again. So I'm not giving up because my destination is ahead of me. I don't know if you people understand what I'm saying. Passing through the valley of Baca, they set their heart on a pilgrimage to Zion. So they grow from strength to strength. Instead of the valley of Baca weakening them, discouraging them, what happened to them? They were going from strength to strength. Each step they took closer to their dreamland encourages them to let them know that this dream will become a reality. Please, I pray for you again. In the name of Jesus, your dreams will become a reality. God is not a man to lie. Why would he make a promise to you without the intention of bringing it to pass? Why do you give up as if the God that made the promise can come through? Look around. There are people here that are smiling. They have problems also. They have challenges. It's only a decision they have made. This phase is temporary. This situation is temporary. Did I tell you before, one time I went to the house of one man, hey, and the spirit of envy wanted to speak out in my mind. I saw the wonderful house the man had, well furnished. And I said, oh God, when will my own turn come? And the Lord reminded me that while he was still a student, this man was a professor. 
I know a lot of problems young people have today. They believe in this Jehovah Shab Shab, isn't it? Sure, there is a Jehovah Shab Shab. <laughs> that one day you will wake up and you find yourself on the throne like Joseph. And you tell Joseph, wow, that was an overnight breakthrough. But Joseph will correct you. It took me almost 15 years to get here. It took me the betrayal of my brothers. It took me through the pains of the pit, the prison. Slavery in Potiphar house to get here. It might look to you as if it was overnight, but 15 long years. So the Lord told me, he said, slow down. It took this man this number of years to get to where he is. Now, by God's grace, where I'm living now is a place I'll be proud of. I would rather be where I am now than that house that I saw that man. So the kind of future you see could be the reason why you are willing to delay gratification. You don't want to fall into the Esau syndrome kind of a thing. Let it happen, sharp, 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 sharp. And then God gives you something that your hand cannot handle, your faith cannot handle. He's not going to do that. You ask God to give you a church of 10,000. Now, you have 100 people in your church and you are full of bitterness against the members. Because every member that comes to your church comes with his problems. The demons fighting them are fighting the pastor also. Because the demons know if we strike the shepherd, that's the easiest way to get the sheep. So, demons coming against 100 people, you can't handle them. How would you handle demons coming after 10,000 people? Because the greater the lifting, the higher the pains. So you pass through the process and increase your threshold of pains. So that somebody will do something and offend you and disappoint you. It doesn't move you. But now, an usher does something you don't like, you curse him in the name of the Lord. A member borrows money and doesn't repay it. What do you do? You curse him in the name of the Lord. Those that you trained and raised as children end up betraying you. What do you do? You curse them? No. If you are going to grow up the ladder, your skin becomes thick. So that like Apostle Paul, you can say, these things don't move me. That man has passed through pains. I see your lifting come in the name of Jesus. Please give me a more befitting amen. I see your promotion come. I see God promote you on the wings of the pains you are passing through. Why? Why? You set your heart on the glory ahead. We trust you've been blessed by the dynamic ministry of God's servant, Dr. John Akpami. You can get copies of our message and books at your local bookshop or at the Encounter Bookshop, Number 1 Revival Avenue by Independent Cinema, Mucho Zario, Kaduna State, Nigeria. We invite you to our School of Healing every Tuesday at 10 a.m. to 12 noon. God's power will be present and give you a testimony. You will experience God for real. Till we come your way again for another glorious feast of God's world.